Hey guys, Mr. Dalek JD here and welcome to my Easter egg tutorial. This time it's going to be for Richtof inside. So if you haven't already and you want to go over and watch the Maxis side, there'll be a link in the description and annotation on screen. And we'll take you over to the Maxis side, as that's the side that I originally done. But a lot of people have requested me to make a tutorial on Richtof in one, and I've made sure that this tutorial is as detailed as possible. So the only thing I'd ask for you guys is to leave a like rating on the video, smash that like button, subscribe for more zombie content, and be sure to check my channel out for more videos as I've posted tons of buried stuff, and I'm sure you guys would love to see that. I want to say a huge thank you to RadOstins27 for creating the video tutorial you're about to see. I've edited it a little bit to make it a little bit more in depth, but overall the video was created by him. So there's a link in the description to take you over to his channel. I highly suggest you go to his channel to see great buried content. And this was all recorded with the Elgato Game Catcher HD. It's a capture card device that records up to 1080p, and without it, we wouldn't have been able to get these great camera shots and all these theater mode shots for you guys. It's got a great feature in it called the playback feature, which literally records everything the capture card sees even when it's not actually being recorded by pressing the record button yourself and there's been a lot of times where we've missed footage for you guys but with the playback feature we've managed to get it and I've literally been spending hours and hours of time on these easter eggs I've literally had little to no sleep at all so I really hope you guys enjoy this without any further ado let's go Okay, so the first step we're going to be going for is we're going to be building the guillotine, which is a table on the left of the saloon. So the first item we're picking up here is the spool, which is in the gunsmith. If you don't know how to get here, go into the bank, go under the tunnel, and it's that room there. It's also the room of all the chalkboard items as well. So we're going to build that onto the guillotine. The second item is the satellite, which is on the top level of the saloon. You just want to open that barrier up there and you want to go towards the edge of the balcony here and there should be satellite item right there. We're going to go and build that as well. And we're just going to show you again in theater mode just in case you missed it and you want to know exactly where it is if you can't find it in your game. It should be literally right there if you can't see it. All right. The third one we're going to be getting is the crystal, which is in the caves. So if you want to make your way through the saloon, there'll be an, uh, a door which will take you up to the caves. And there we go. The crystal will be right there. You just want to go right there. When you go up to the crystal, you should be able to see it. It's embedded within these crate of player. rocks. And the fourth part is the antenna, which is in the lower level of the barn here. So building all that together gives you guys this. And you know you've done it because you'll hear ricked off in speed. Oh, All right, so the second step is we're going to be charging up the orbs. So you want to roll the box until you get the new gun, the Paralyzer. Then you want to go to all the different orbs and charge them up. So this one was behind the mansion there. Show you again in theater mode just to show you where it is. The second one here is outside the saloon. You've got to charge all these orbs up until they shine white and you hear a ding. The third one is left of the church right there. And the last one is in the caves. You shouldn't be able to miss it. Just go about and charge those bad boys up and you'll hear Rick talking. Moving on to the third step, which is the lantern. And what you'll see is around the map once you finish doing the orbs you will look up into the sky and you will see a floating lantern and this is actually a ghost carrying this lantern now the way to get this lantern down is to cook a grenade into the air long enough so that when you throw it it will explode within the radius of the lantern and knock it down all you need to do is once you've knocked it down you need to pick the lantern up now it may take a few tries but once you've done that pick up the lantern and the next step will be to charge the lantern so whoever has the lantern on their person you have to go into the mansion and start killing some ghosts and every time you kill a ghost you'll hear uh, a noise of the souls being entered into the lantern now an easy way to save ammo is to just use galva knuckles on this section but again it's up to you as long as you can hear the chimes that means you're filling up the lantern with souls and you know you've done this right because you'll hear a quote from Rick Toffield. So this building is the next place you want to visit. After you've filled up the lantern, there'll be a lantern icon appear on this building. And this building is opposite the saloon. Now what you want to do is you want to place your lantern in this and it will show up with a code. Now I want to thank Mr. Ruffle Waffles for creating this really, really useful image for you guys of how to solve this cipher. Now on the wall there'll be three different lines of characters and each line represents an actual place within the tunnels. There'll be signs on the walls and these symbols represent a 
place within the tunnel. Now I'm going to show you on the screen guys now for you to decipher this. All you have to do is look at which codes correspond to what is in your game and it will show you the locations of where you need to knife these three locations. Say for instance in your game the first line of code ended up being Bone Orchard Vein, the second being Consumption Cross and the last one being Ground Biter Pit. What you need to do is go in the tunnel and find the sign that matched with that and knife that in the correct order that appeared on the wall so first second and third once you've done that we can do the next step it's best for this step that every player has vulture raid because once you've knifed the last sign you'll see the wisp and you have to just walk into it and hold x and the wisp will disappear into different locations but you can only see the wisp if you actually have vulture raid so to make this easiest because you need to get to the wisp quick enough otherwise it disappears so it's easiest if all players have the wisp therefore they can see the wisp from where its location is and it will go in a few different locations it probably changes about six or seven times before finally moving to the guillotine which is where we want it to end up at Once the Wisp has actually gone to the guillotine, you're going to need to stand by it and kill five zombies. The Wisp will kind of charge up the zombies and that power will help charge up the Wisp. As you can see, it's got an extra light floating around the crystal now. So you want to keep repeating that until we get a quote from Maxis speaking about going back in time. For the next step, someone needs to have a time bomb. They need to throw it directly onto the guillotine table, and then all four players have to stand around it in this position. What's going to happen now, once you activate the time bomb, is it's going to take you into round infinity. And with this round infinity, you need to find your dead bodies. It's pretty crazy. And I'm going to show you in the video the locations of some of the bodies. Now, the locations known so far is there's one near the first box location. There's a body location next to the orb next to the church. There's a location near the candy shop entrance. There's a location next to the church workbench. And there's a location in front of the guillotine. There is no bodies in the mansion as far as I know. And here we go. You've just seen Misty and now you see uh, Samuel's body there. We're going to enter it again just to show you guys the different locations. It's really, really tricky. It will take you more than one attempt to actually get this down. But trust me, when you do get it, it's amazing. Now, of course, since it's round infinity, the zombies literally have infinity health. There is no point trying to kill the zombies because this is what would happen if zombies in the storyline wise really did go on forever since the zombies rounds are basically infinite if you were to get to an infinite round this is what it would be like so we're searching for bodies here like I've shown you nothing was found and there we go we found a switch and once you've done that you just need to survive you will not need to kill any zombies because you can't so don't bother wasting any ammo trying to find any but if you want to make the search easier you can throw monkey bombs just to make sure that no zombies get in your way Welcome to your future. Now hurry and find the switch. Ironically enough, we do not have much time. The next step is to pull the levers in the maze. Now, once you enter the maze, Rick Tuffin will tell you to activate the switch in a certain order, and you'll see four switches on different gates in the maze. They'll be coloured red, blue, green, and yellow. You want all four of these switches to spark, and then Rick Tuffin will talk. A really great hint and tip for you guys to do this is once the coloured switch sparks, you know for sure that that is the order in which it should be hit. So, for instance, if you hit this green one uh, second and it started sparking, 
that means that whatever order that the colors turn out to be in that the green one will be the second one but every time you try this you have to come out the maze and come back in the maze in order for the levers to reset now again mr ruffle waffles has made a really really great detailed picture of every combination that could possibly be in the maze and if you want to go in the description and open that then be sure to check that out because it's a little bit too big for this video but as you can hear rick toffin saying the next step we have to go over to the fountain and make a wish it is really cool so again there we're showing you that one sparked that means that that was in that correct order now it's really weird because when I tried this on my second try we actually managed to get it and the last one is sharpshooter so go over to the fountain near the church hold X to make a wish and then these targets will appear and right now I'm showing you the locations for every single target to showing you where they spawn so you get a very good clear idea because for a, a, this can only be done with four players and each player has to be assigned into a certain location at the moment this is the left side of the mansion there are targets also around the juggernaut around the candy shop and inside the saloon now to get this to work this is the last step everyone has to shoot all the targets completely they have to shoot every single one it doesn't matter about accuracy but you can't miss a single target otherwise it does not count it may take you about seven to eight tries but hopefully this will show you how to get this part down and also i'm showing you some great locations for each character to stand in order to get a really good look and feel of how to shoot these targets as effectively and quickly as possible so as you can see i'm standing there to the left side of the mansion then we've got noah j456 there shooting we've got our friend there on top of the roof and then we've got the final one in the saloon bar, who's actually sitting, I believe it's in the corner of the windowsill there. That's the greatest spots you'll get for hitting all the targets. Now that we've shown you those locations, let's get this into motion. So this is the location for Juggernaut, and again, it's just trial and error and practice for all your teammates to learn where the targets are going to spawn, and to make sure that they're shooting every single one. You know when you've done it, because you'll get all the perks. And that, my friends, is how to complete the Mind Games Easter Egg for Riktoff inside. This part is really exciting. You get all the perks permanently, and there you go. You have just earned one Easter Egg on ripped off inside towards getting the ripped off in finale and I'm going to show you this the viewpoints from all the other locations as well for you to get the targets 
But yeah, that is just one of si uh, one of three Easter eggs that you've got to complete in order to get Richtofen's ultimate Easter egg ending, which I'm going to have on my channel, and there'll be annotations and links updated in the description to take you guys over to there. Make sure you subscribe to see that, and if you haven't already, go and watch the Easter egg tutorial for Maxis aside, and go over and watch the ultimate Easter egg ending for Maxis, where he takes control and Richtofen is left to burn. Now I just want to again want to thank Radostin27 and Mr. Ruffle Waffles for providing the gameplay and providing really useful pictures for you guys to help out with the Easter egg. It's been a huge community effort and I've been so happy with the results of everyone getting together and figuring out the Easter egg steps for themselves and just sharing it about with everyone. So thank you. Be sure to check the annotations and the links in the descriptions. Just open up and look through all of them. Take over to their channels and I'll see you guys very soon.